and welcome back to another video. So in this video I'm going to show you how to set up an air pump. This is just a normal aquarium air pump. There are lots and lots of different types obviously, different shapes, different colours. They all do the same thing and all that is is pumping air through tubing into your aquarium or pond. So the reason you want to pump air into your aquarium or pond is not to really put oxygen in the water but you're going to move the oxygenated layer from the top to the bottom with the bubbles pushing the water around. So it's more the water being moved which helps oxygenate the water than actually putting physical oxygen in the water if that even makes sense. What we're going to do is go through the basics of how all these work. If you've got yourself an air pump and you have no idea how to use it this is going to show you how to use it. I'm going to grab one of these air pumps and quickly show you the inside. So that is what is inside an air pump. They are an electromagnet, it's very low voltage, obviously unplug it before you pull it apart. <laughs> but it's electromagnet, it's little tiny magnets here that push these little rubber bellows back and forward. And these going back and forward with a little valve inside there which is a flapper valve, which is that thing there, that pushes the air out. So it pushes in and in and in, in and in and in and then the air keeps pushing out. So if your air pump is getting quite noisy, usually there's a little tear or a break in one of these rubber diaphragms or the little valves inside this bit, they can wear out. And if there's a little break in that, there's no pressure, so you're not gonna get any air. And if these wear out, they're gonna rattle on that and that's gonna make a really horrible noise. None of these air pumps are really, really quiet. You're gonna get a slight hum to them. They have little rubber feet on most of them. You don't want to wrap them up in something because they are going to overheat if you wrap them up in towels or anything like that. But because you have your airline tubing, which is this stuff here, connected to one of your outlets like that, this is relatively cheap. It's on average about a dollar a meter or so, depending on where you live in the world. And you can get like 10 or 20 meters of this and have this sitting somewhere away from where you are. So if it's vibrating and making a little bit of noise, you won't hear it. And you can run that tubing all the way to your pond or your fish tank. That is just a simple way of keeping them quiet. Some are quieter than others, but it's all relative to the size of the pump and how much pressure is actually on the little rubber diaphragms of how deep it's going to pump the air into. There are quite a few different types, as I said. Single outlet pumps are the main one. Obviously, it's just one out. They usually have a high and a low switch like that one does there. This model here has two little outlets and it has a little dial on each side that you can adjust how much air is going out to it. What you don't want to do is have a little stopper in line in one of these to reduce the flow because if you do that, that is actually going to put back pressure on the little rubber diaphragms and that's going to make them break a lot quicker than what they usually work. What you can do is you can get little valves like these guys. Very, very easy to use. You have your airline tubing going into that and then that gives you free. So you can have one going directly to the tank, you can have one turned off, and then you can have one slightly open so you're releasing some pressure so it's not back pressuring the pump. But these come in all different sizes, so obviously that's a free way, there's a five way one, there's everything. You can join them all up. The more of these you have going, the bigger the air pump has to be, and you can get some pretty big air pumps as well. That there is the next size up, which is the same idea. It has four outlets. So inside this is just double what you saw of this one, which is your double output doohickey thing. So it's just got four rubber diaphragms as opposed to two rubber diaphragms. The single ones have just got one. But you can easily get parts for them. They're relatively cheap to fix, but nowadays, unfortunately, most of these are made to work for a couple of years, then they just wear out because they're pretty much just made of cheap plastic, unfortunately. The old ones 20, 30 years ago would last for ages. These ones, it's kind of after a year or two. You can replace the parts, get another year or two out of them, but they don't last like 20 years like they used to, unfortunately. What I'm gonna go through now is how to set one of these up. Okay, so we have our air pump. We're gonna go for a one output air pump. It's got a simple little high-low switch on it. It's 150 liters per hour. Don't even worry about that. The smaller the air pump, the less air it's gonna pump out. So this is just gonna be a fine to do two little things. We're gonna let it power a little sponge filter, which is one of these. And we're going to have a little air stone, which is one of those. And all the air stone does is it makes the big bubbles that would come out of the tubing into finer, smaller bubbles so it circulates a lot better. We are gonna use one of these as well. These are called a check valve. All they do is they stop the water from siphoning back into the pump 
if you have your pump below the water level and the power goes off, water can siphon through your tubing, through your air stone, back into the pump and that can stuff the pump up. They're not designed to get wet, so this will just stop any water from siphoning back into that, which will just protect it. So if you have a power cut or anything like that, you know that you can easily protect them with these. With these, you can blow through one side, the air will go through, but if you blow through the other side, the air's not gonna go through that bit. As a general rule, this little pointy bit here points towards the fish tank so the air goes that way very very easy we're going to cut a little bit of tubing like that it doesn't really matter what length and we're just going to push it into this depending on your tubing and where you live and how warm it is is how well that's going to go on there you can heat this up in a little bit of hot water to push it over it a lot easier but for this demonstration we're just going to stick it on like that it's not really going to come off that is our air pump. It's a lovely blue color, Aqua FX brand. It has a high low switch. And all that does is that reduces the power to the little electromagnet. So you just have less flappy bits, less flappy bits. So less air coming out of it. And then we're gonna connect that bit onto there, push that all the way in. Then we're gonna get the rest of our tubing. We're only using a meter of tubing for this one. We're going to stick it on the end of that. We are also going to cut another little bit of this with our dodgy scissors. There we go. We're going to use one of these, which is a two-way valve. And the reason for this is we can have more than one going onto it. So you don't necessarily need a double outlet pump to run two things. And if you do have a double outlet pump, you could have two of these on it and turn it into a four outlet pump. Obviously, the more things you have on it, the less air you're gonna get out of each side. But that's why you want these little taps to adjust the flow, because that way, all the air is not gonna go out one. You can just muck around with it and have an even amount of air if you want to. So there is our tubing there. We are going to cut that in half again with our Aquascape scissors. <laughs> And then we're going to have one little bit there, one little bit there. That is going to go to our air stone. Now these air stones on average are going to last for about two or three years in the water. Because they are a glued colored sand, eventually they're going to break down and they are going to clog with algae in that as well. So you probably want to replace them every two or three years. You can sort of clean them off a little bit by gently giving them a scrub but they are quite delicate after a couple of years so you don't really want to scrub them too much so after a few years look at getting a replacement air stone so if you've just got an aquarium and it's already got this stuff you might need to replace the stones and a few other bits and pieces this is our little filter so this is just a simple sponge filter which is just air driven obviously and the tubing goes into there and that is it. So that is our simple little setup. Because this is going into a tiny little tank, we don't have much tubing from this bit. If you had it in a proper big tank, you would have as much tubing as you want. So you can have it tucked away and do its thing. Now we're going to find a fish tank. And we have a little aquarium. Obviously, it's a little bit too small for our filter, but it's going to just demonstrate what it actually does. So we have our air stone like that. What we are going to use as well is one of these, which is just a little suction cap that's designed to clip onto the airline tubing. There are lots of different ways of doing this. You can bury this under the gravel and have your bubbles come up as well. But we're just going to use the little suction cap and place it there. And that's going to stop it from rising when the air gets pumped through it because sometimes you'll get too much air this will keep rising to the top a little rock or something like that is going to work perfectly fine as well this is our filter so these are designed for a slightly bigger tank we do have smaller filters as well ideally you want this filter this little top bit to be under the water we are going to turn it on and look for bubbles and because we have two going from one pump, we have bubbles coming out of that, no bubbles coming out of that. If we reduce the air to that one, all the air is going to go out that one. So we might hook it on to the bigger setting. So it's now on the higher setting. Then we can just adjust so we get bubbles coming out of both. And there we go. That way we have bubbles coming out of the air stone and our filter. And if you can see that, they're there somewhere. I'm going to top it up with water. 
and that is so much better. So if we do lose power or the power gets turned off for some random reason, the water is not going to siphon back into our pump because of our one-way valve. Another way of doing it is having your air pump higher than the tank. If you've got your air pump higher than the tank, obviously it's not going to siphon back into it. But because the air pumps can rattle around and get noisy, you don't really want to keep them on the lid of your aquarium or anywhere where there's glass or something rattly to just make a noise. You're always going to hear a slight vibration or hum to them. And that is the basics of setting up an air pump with an air stone and a little sponge filter. This is suitable for like about a 60 litre tank. So what's that, like 20 gallons or so? Not this tiny, tiny little tank here. If there were fish in here, it would be a bit of a spa pool, but you get the idea. Thank you very much for watching. If you found this useful, just click the thumbs up so I know and I'll make more videos. We will see you in the next video.